break-even analysis. Break-even analysis uses the contribution format income statement to determine the sales needed to break even and the number of units sold in order to break even. The contribution format income statement takes sales and deducts variable expenses in order to yield the contribution margin. From the contribution margin, fixed expenses are deducted in order to yield net operating income. Cost of goods sold is always considered to be a variable expense because it is indexed always in relationship to sales. It is the matching of the expenses of the items sold when they are sold that yields cost of goods sold. Therefore, since it is predicated upon things having been sold, it will be a variable expense and will change on a per unit basis in relationship to sales. Additionally, we have variable selling expenses, variable administrative expenses, and fixed expenses, fixed selling expenses, and fixed administrative expenses. However, fixed expenses could be something related to manufacturing other than just simply selling and administrative expenses. So how does break-even analysis work? What we're going to do for each one of the problems that we're going to use, we're going to set up this particular grid each time because there's a lot of mathematic relationships that are inherent in this grid. And so by filling this out, we'll be able to more or less be able to fill in the information that we'll need to solve these problems. This is total dollars. So this represents the total dollar sales of 12000 this represents the total variable cost of 6960 This represents the contribution margin from which we are subtracting the fixed expenses in order to yield the profit. We're talking in this instance about 2,000 units that were sold. So using the number of units sold for those things that, that vary in relationship to units sold, which would be the sales price as well as variable expenses and the contribution margin too, we can take the total dollars and divide them by the number of units sold in order to determine the price per unit. So additionally, if we only had $6 per unit and we knew the unit number of units we sold as being 2,000, we can come up with a total dollar value of 12,000. Additionally, we know how much the total variable costs were, so we know that that divided by 2,000 is going to give us 3,400, I mean, three, sorry, $3.48. Additionally, we don't even really have to calculate the contribution margin because it's simply going to be on a per unit basis, because it's simply going to be the variable expenses on a per unit basis subtracted from the per unit sales price. Or we could take the $5,040 and divide it by 2000 in order to come up with the contribution margin per unit. The ratios are indexed upon sales, so 100% is always going to be the ratio associated with sales because it's going to be 12000 divided by 12000 Or if we only had the information on a per unit basis, it would be $6 divided by $6. Then we can derive the variable ratio by taking the variable expenses divided by sales, which means that there's 48% are related to variable expenses, or on a per unit basis, we could take the $3.48 and divide it by $6 in order to come up with the 58% ratio. Again, because sales are 100 and variable expenses are 40, 58%, we know that our contribution margin is 42%. So essentially what this is telling us just by looking at this, for every dollar sold, 58% of those costs are going to be associated with variable costs. So in order to make this money, we had to spend this money. And this means that this is the amount left over for you to spend or for a company to spend on its fixed expenses. So let's look at solving for break-even sales. Here we have our grid, and we're going to use look at the formula here. To obtain break-even sales, the formula is break-even sales, which I've abbreviated as BE with a superscript S, is equal to fixed cost divided by the contribution margin ratio. So that's break-even sales is equal to fixed cost divided by the contribution margin ratio. So from the grid that we filled out, the information that we need, we need the fixed expenses and we need the contribution margin ratio. 
Next, we'll say break-even sales is equal to $4,000 in fixed expenses divided by the contribution margin radio, ratio, which is 4,000 divided by 0.42. So when we're doing this division, we're going to change these um, percentages to 0.42 in order to calculate the math. Break-even sales will then be $9,524. So let's prove that we're going to break even, that we're going to cover our fixed expenses and have a zero profit, meaning that we break even. We're able to stay in business one more month and hopefully increase our sales to get beyond break even. So let's look at this is like, you know, the ground zero sort of scenario. But each company needs to do this because they need to know what they need to make in order to just stay in business. So our sales are $9,524. Now we need to be able to calculate what our variable expenses are. Well, we can take 58% since the variable expenses are supposed to be a stable 58% of this sale. So this is the money that we had to spend in order to make this money. So we'll take the $9,524, multiply it by 58%, and we'll come up with $5,524, which when we subtract from the $9,524, our contribution margin is 4000 which means that we were able to break even, stay in business for another month. Now we can look at this calculation on a per unit basis. So we'll need different information from our grid over here. So let's look at break even quantities. Break even sales units or quantities are calculated as Break even quantities, which is break even with a superscript Q, is equal to the fixed cost divided by the contribution margin per unit. So contribution margin per unit. So we have per unit information here. Our fixed expenses we have as total dollars here. And then this is going to be the contribution margin per unit. So break even quantities is equal to $4,000 in fixed expenses divided by the contribution margin per unit which is $2.52. So break-even quantities are going to be 1,587 1, units. So that's the number of units that we need to sell in order to break even. So let's multiply that out and prove that we're going to break even. So 1,587 times $6 is the sale price per unit is 9,524. So that gave us the same answer for break-even sales. So if you were to be given uh, this amount of information here, we had this amount of information here, and you know what your break-even quantities are, all you have to do is multiply it by the sales price per unit to come up with your total dollar break-even sales. So on a per unit basis, we're going to take the 1587 and we're going to multiply it by $3.48, which is our per unit variable costs. And that's going to yield 5524 which when subtracted from the 9524 is going to give us $4,000, which means that we're going to break even. So now let's recap and look at these formulas and look at a little a few memory tools in order to help us memorize these. So look at what's different between the two formulas. These look the same except for this is sales and this is quantities. The fixed expenses are the same and is divided by the contribution margin ratio here and this is divided by the contribution margin per unit here. So as an easy way to remember it when we're talking about sales we're talking about the ratio so it'll be SR when you want to solve for sales. Again, quantities here, units here, so the easy way to remember this is when we're looking for quantities or sales units, we will be looking at the contribution margin per unit. So SR and QU will help you to remember these formulas.